What you guys got another video here for you. Windows 11 killing your SSD. My longevity secrets will help you keep your SSD safe. Are you terrified your SSD is going to foul due to a Fizon controller and take all of your precious Windows 11 data with it? Well, you're not alone. Many people worry about the lifespan of their SSD. But what if I told you there's a way to significantly extend it? Now, the first thing you need to do is download the software for your NVMe drive. Now, if you've got a Gen 5 NVMe drive, it's going to be super fast, and that means it's going to create a lot of heat. Now, there's been a lot of drama uh, pointing towards Fizen controllers and also Windows updates breaking or killing uh, SSD drives. So if you have got a drive that has a Fizen controller in it, then the manufacturers recommend you do what I show you here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and install the software for this particular drive. This is a, a Samsung drive. It doesn't have a Fizen controller in this drive, but it is a very fast Gen 5 drive. And that means it supports PCI Express 5.0. Now, what's important is when you buy one of these super fast drives, it's important to buy a branded drive, i.e. One of the major brands out there they will have good software to support that drive if you're buying some cheaper type drive they don't normally supply software and this is where you're going to start running into issues now because samsung's a reputable dealer you're going to get really good support and good software with their drives you can see we are running the samsung 9100 pro 2 terabyte and i've got the temperatures set to celsius and it's at 49 celsius now, this drive that I purchased doesn't have any sort of cooler on it. It doesn't have any heatsink. And that's because you can buy these with heatsink models or non heatsink models. This has no heatsink. I did that for a reason because I knew the motherboard had a heatsink on it. As you can see right here, we can now apply the heatsink uh, for this particular drive. It does have a thermal pad here. I need to remove this tiny little plastic thing right here and this will allow the thermal pad to sit on top of the drive. This will help to dissipate heat from the drive. That is the most important part for these particular drives because they will run extra hot, and that's because they're running at faster speeds than the normal slower drives. This is a Gen 5 PCI Express 5.0. Now, we're not putting any major load on the drive itself, and that means the temperature is now at a nice cool 49 celsius now if you had no heat sink on this actual drive and you was running say a benchmark or you're running some sort of rendering of a video 4k video or even playing games the temperatures can start to skyrocket pretty high and this can cause thermal throttling so normally these drives if you have adequate cooling i.e on a motherboard with a heat sink on it then you should see temperatures around 70 celsius and no more so and if you can get this below 70 celsius with proper cooling then that's even better so you may be saying what will happen if i put this into the motherboard without a heat sink well you can expect temperatures in the 80 celsius bracket up to 85 84 celsius around there and under heavy load it would be too much for that drive eventually and you will start to see thermal throttling and it will cause major problems with that particular drive and this can shorten the life of the drive even making the drive foul over time if you run in it at these critical temperatures so it's important for longevity to have adequate cooling for your drive because without any sort of adequate cooling for that particular drive you can see a performance drop but you can see here we're getting very good results here for that drive as you can see we've got sequential reads up in the 14,000 mark and we've got the sequential writes up in the 13,000 plus mark which is super fast and with all that speed you're going to generate a lot of heat and it's important that you keep the drive cool and even Fizon have said with their drives and controllers that you need to keep it cool otherwise you run the risk of drive failure and it's important now you can see when i go back and we reached 59 celsius and that is pretty good for a drive of this caliber and why is that so cool and the reason why it's cool is because we've got that big thermal pad on there a heat sink on the motherboard and we've got adequate cooling inside the case that's allowing air 
to flow into the case and keep everything nice and cool. Now, the next step is to make sure that the drive's firmware is updated to the very latest firmware update. And this can alleviate a lot of problems, especially if you've got a Fison controller. Fison have even recommended that you make sure you run the very latest firmware on those drives and to make sure that you don't run into any sort of issues. So if you've got software here, you can run a firmware update. Mine is already updated. Now, if you're running into temperature issues and you're getting thermal throttling, it's time to think about adding some form of heatsink to your actual drive. And this will help keep the drive running nice and cool and keep those temperatures down. Even if you've bought a cheaper end motherboard that doesn't have a decent quality heatsink on the M.2 slot, you can always buy one of these aftermarket coolers to cool down your drive. Get a nice big thermal pad on there and get yourself a nice cooler. Now, some of these thin slimline ones are just not going to cut it for a PCI Express 5.0 drive. You're going to need something pretty substantial to keep that drive running nice and cool. Some of them even have fans on them to help keep the temperatures down. So if you've got a Fison controller on your SSD and you're worried about it failing, then make sure you do those three things. Keeping the temperatures down and make sure you've got good cooling and make sure that you've got uh, the latest firmware. You can see on this motherboard, if you've populated that little slot there with no heatsink, you can run into issues. Now, if you're getting temperature issues and you're using the main slot with a heatsink on it, then you can actually remove that heatsink and use an aftermarket cooler if you wanted to. And you can also add in some nice fans into the case to help with some sort of cooling in there to keep the drive and components cool inside of your build. And it's important that you keep all of these components running nice and cool because that helps uh, the longevity of your hardware. The next step, which is important, is finding your motherboard's make and model number and revision number. You can see, I can see it right here in system information inside my PC. You're going to need this information because you're going to want to get the latest BIOS for your motherboard. This is also important. This can help alleviate a lot of problems. If you are running an older BIOS, you can run into issues like Jay's Two Cents had on his system where the drive was disappearing and having other issues like that. And that's because he was running older BIOSes. And for some strange reason, it affected that drive and the behavior of that drive, which was completely different to the initial problems that fires and controllers were having, where the firmware was uh, not the correct firmware and it was causing a lot of problems. So... Now what you need to do is head over to the motherboard manufacturer's website and download the very latest BIOS. Now many years ago, you would advise people to stay on that BIOS that they were using if you was having no issues. The same was if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But I think we're now in an age where we will have to start recommending that you update the BIOS to the latest version to fix and alleviate a lot of issues just like Jay had with his system. So those days might be gone with that saying uh, where you can just leave it alone if it's working okay. So those three things are very important. Keeping the temperatures down, using an adequate heat sink for your drive, making sure the firmware on that drive is updated to the latest firmware, which is stable and released by the manufacturer, and updating the motherboard BIOS for your uh, system. And that way you should be okay, even if you have a Fison uh, controller. Uh, because obviously with Windows, people blamed Windows for the initial uh, breakage, but a lot of it was due to the firmware on the drive itself. The firmware that was released was an engineering sample firmware, and that's what was causing an issue. So we can check the BIOS right here. This is the very latest BIOS on this page. You can see we've got the version, and we also have the date. If you open up your system information panel here, you can see the BIOS on this motherboard is out of date by quite a bit. And this is very common. This is probably one of the most common problems I see people run into when building PCs. Why is the BIOS out of date? Well, when they build these motherboards, they basically flash the motherboard with the BIOS, the very first BIOS that is released. And they can sit on the shelves for months 
and they just don't get updated. They're sealed and ready to be shipped out to uh, customers. And unfortunately, you can see this is the actual one here. The first release of Bohels is on this motherboard, and that will sit in a warehouse somewhere and then ship to your house. And by then, there's probably six or seven BIOS releases to that motherboard, and that means you're using a very old, outdated BIOS, which was first released for that motherboard. It's important that you can see here that there's lots of updates, and these are just the small uh, information they give you, but significantly enhanced memory compatibility. So if you're running into memory compatibility issues, or you're running into issues where you might be getting freezing or other issues, CPU compatibility, enhanced system performance and stability, and other things like that. So when you first buy a motherboard, it's important that you update to the latest BIOS. And once you update, some of these might tell you there's no going back once you update to this particular BIOS. That's another thing you need to look into as well. So, of course, if you want to see how to flash a BIOS, I've made a video on that in the past, but I will make an updated video on the importance of flashing your BIOS with brand new hardware because there's going to be a lot of releases for bug fixes and added stability and support for hardware. Now, if you don't have uh, any sort of software, you can use HW Info right here. So if you're using a drive that doesn't have software with it because it's a cheaper branded drive, then you can use software like HW Info or you can use Crystal Disk Info and that will give you information on the reads and writes on the drive. It will also tell you the actual uh, temperatures of that drive and whether there's any sort of issues with that drive as well. So you can use third party software if your software doesn't come with that NVMe drive that you're using on your PC. So for all those people asking the question, is the Fizen uh, issue resolved? And the short answer to that is yes, it is. You just need to follow what I'm showing you here. Now, Windows updates doesn't get out of it completely uh, free because uh, the industry-wide effects of KB5063878 and also KB5062660 uh, updates on Windows 11 that potentially impacted at several storage devices, including some supported by Fizen. But they do go on to say the best practices for end users while our validation testing has not identified any concerns related to these Windows 11 updates, we have shared industry uh, best practices to support high performance storage devices. They go on to say we continue to advise that for extended workloads such as when transferring large files or even decompressing large archives, users ensure a proper heatsink or thermal pad is utilized with the storage device, just like I showed you in this video. This helps maintain optimal operating temperatures, reduces the likelihood of thermal throttling, and ensures sustained uh, performance. So, basically, in a nutshell, update your firmware on your drive. Uh, make sure that's updated, update your BIOS, make sure that's fully updated to the latest BIOS, and also make sure you're using adequate heat sinks and thermal pads on that drive and keeping your temperatures into a safer area to make sure it's not going to reach thermal throttling or overheating. This can also cause major problems with that drive and even cause drive failure. So that is basically it. And as for those samples that they released with engineering sample uh, firmwares, of course, that did cause an issue. If that was ever sent out to a person that was testing, that would obviously have the wrong firmware on it, and that could have caused issues. And there's also Fison saying they investigated it thoroughly by dedicating 4,500 testing hours on there across all their devices, reporting as potentially impacted and conducted over 2,200 tests. So using a bit of common sense and also following these simple guides that I show you on here should make it safer to use those drives. Now, I have a Gen 5 PCI Express 5.0. Common sense tells me that drive is going to run hot because it's a new generation of drives and they do get pretty toasty. Even the Gen 4 drives got a little bit toasty. So a bit of common sense and keeping adequate cooling on that system will help. Anyway, my name is Ben Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Big shout out to my YouTube members. I appreciate the support. Have a lovely weekend and I shall catch you in the next video. Bye for now.